Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Thursday, March the 12th, and it's 9 o'clock p.m. And I've been wanting to do a video. Uh, but I wasn't quite sure what angle I wanted to come at and what to say. But I want to address this corona uh, epidemic thing that's going around. Um, and I want to share with you a, an email, and I'm going to keep it anonymous. Uh, she said that a friend of hers just emailed her. She said in Italy, it's so bad, they are turning people away from the hospital, telling them to take their parents or self home to die because they are out of beds. They have no more medical equipment to use and cannot help them. She says, please take this seriously. It is in our country now. Some teens went to volunteer at the veterans home in a nearby town. Now two vets are very ill. It will probably spread like wildfire now. So those teens must have come in contact with somebody who had it, but didn't know they had it. At any rate, it seems the teenagers and older children are hardly being affected. That's what I heard on one video. I think it was one with Dr. Oz and uh, the Surgeon General, but I'm not sure. I've been trying to find out what's going on around the country. Anyway, this person goes on to say, I'm here I am hearing from a number of sources around the country that people are not getting the tests they need. Yes, I've seen that too. Even small kids with other health problems. Despite all this, I am still hearing some people saying this isn't real. I dread to think what it will take to wake people up. The main doctor from the NIH admitted the medical system is not set up to handle it. And she says, remain in prayer. As yes, we should. Okay. Now here's Here's what I want to remind you. Okay. It doesn't matter if somebody created this or it came from bat soup, <laughs> which I don't believe in a million years. But let's just say it did. Okay. It started in Wuhan. People traveled home from China. They got aboard a princess cruiser. Okay, that took it to different countries. However, it happened. I do not believe for a minute they're closing down National Basketball Association games. Uh, no more games for the rest of the season. Um... Disneyland shutting down, uh, what all have I heard? So many things. Closing down, closing schools, closing universities. Okay. Don't know what's going on in your town, but I'll just share what's going on in mine. All right. In this senior care facility that I live in, we're having a meeting in the morning at 10 o'clock. And we're going to hear from our executive director. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> and I just heard that a, a similar facility, not very far from here, 
shops right up the road from the Walmart they take us to on Tuesday. Well, those who care to go. And they have, what? what's the word they use? Um, they're like quarantined. They're, um, there are no cases in Alabama yet, people. <laughs> and yet, they're, I don't know if quarantined is the word they used. Oh, I can't remember. But it's like that. They, visitors can't come in. They're not going to bust them to the stores. Um, I don't know about if they're going to fix them to do that here. Um... A lot of us independent living people go on that bus to get our food because a lot of people but they get we get one meal a day for 150 a month if you want it I don't <laughs> I gained 15 pounds in six weeks when I moved in here I said no more of this I can't eat their sauces and their gravies and their salad dressings and all the you know whatever was served to me I ate it all because that's just how I am I think it's because of how I grew up in such a large family and our portions were just so big and there was no second helpings my mom knew how to cook exactly the right amount and it was a main thing and maybe a side of green beans that she did not know how to season. Anyway, maybe there wasn't money for seasonings. But anyway, the point is, <laughs> when I started eating out with my first husband, when we started dating, we ate out a lot. That was our date, you know. And so I ate everything, you know, whatever I ordered, I ate it. And I started gaining weight. It's terrible. Anyway, I've struggled with that all my life. Now let me get back on subject. Um, a lot of us choose, some of them eat that meal, meal and the best one is the middle of the day, but they want to go buy groceries to eat supper. Because they're hungry by supper. <laughs> some people are and some aren't. And our, what's happened to me in the last two weeks, I want to share with you what this COVID-19 is doing to people. I've never had this problem before. Last week, I put an order in, forgot to order toilet paper, but I ordered water, some bottled water, gallons. It's so much cheaper than getting those little, and you're not even supposed to drink bottled water anyway. So I use filtered pitchers, but um, pitchers that filter tap water anyway. The point is, and they had peanut butter on sale, and... I was surprised they still had anything on sale, but it was buy one, get one free of these little 16-ounce jars, and I normally get a 40-ounce big jar, so I ordered four jars. Well, I only got three, and no water, and it turns out I was charged for them. Well, it was buy one, get one free, so I got... Yeah, I, I paid the amount as if I got all four. And I paid for the water, which was cheap. Okay, it wasn't a huge amount of money. But I didn't get the items. And I'm thinking, hmm, that's odd. Well, she must have been shopping for other people. The items rolled out of the bag. You know, I was making excuses for her. And they credited me no problem well yesterday I ordered two big packs of toilet paper ultra the ultra strong um, 
store brand, but it's just as good as like Charmin to me. Anyway, the guy gets one of the Ultra Soft because the Ultra Strongs were sold out already even though they were there in the morning or else the website would say, wouldn't even show them. Okay, he must have purchased out of his pocket a four roll pack and got one of what I ordered, rang it up, got charged to me, and took the 12 pack and put the four rolls in my bag. <laughs> And, you know, first I was kind of upset about it because I gave him a bad review because I went online and I saw what they still had and that he did that and that I was charged for the 12. I'm like, this has never happened before. This illness is just making people nuts. <laughs> making, he probably got to the store, there wasn't anything much there. Someone probably said, oh yeah, didn't you know there's a run on toilet paper? <laughs> and, uh, you know, hand sanitizer and soap and this and that and that. Anyway, and he probably didn't know it because he's probably working two jobs. <laughs> uh, buying groceries is probably not his full-time job. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, and maybe he panicked and thought, gosh, oh, I need toilet paper, and it's, I don't know, you know, people do nutty things, they do worse than that, when it's, if they don't have the Lord, and they start worrying, and uh, a temptation goes through their mind to steal, that was stealing, okay, well, this is what I wanted to talk about, we belong to Christ, and we have the mind of Christ. And I know you all know this, my subscribers, but if anybody's new or you're just visiting and you just happen to be just visiting this time, we do not worry. The Word of God says, we are not to worry, for worrying cannot add even a day to your life. It cannot add a cubit to your stature. What does that mean? <laughs> I, I can't imagine the Lord even using that as an example. It's almost comical. A cubit is from your elbow to the tip of your finger and it's approximately 18 inches. So he's saying worrying about being short is not going to add 18 inches to your height. <laughs> In other words, worrying about anything isn't going to change it. Okay, we have God Almighty on our side and his angels, and his word. We've got our Psalm 91 that I keep saying. Make sure you're saying that over yourself or your family. You know, all of you, every night. Somebody said the Lord gave them a message or gave a message to add Psalm 51. Now that one is all about repentance and making your heart pure again. Great idea. I would do it. Whether it came from the Lord or not, I don't know the source, so I can't tell you who said that. But I think it's a wonderful idea. I read it the other day. It's in a video. All right. Plus, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm going to pull that one up. 
I don't remember the source. No, there, no weapon formed. Oh, that's in Isaiah. No wonder I didn't remember it. This one is, let's see, KJV. Um, it always gives you the NIV first. All right, I like the Berean Study Bible. It says, starts with 16, Isaiah 54, 16 says, Behold, I have created the craftsman who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon fit for its task, and I have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. Verse 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the Lord's servants, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. Uh, do you believe the word of God or not? Do we believe Psalm 91? I'm pulling that up. Let's see, I believe it's verse 7. The whole, the whole thing is wonderful. Okay, this says, uh, Though a thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, it shall not come nigh thee. Okay, this is King James. I'm going to go to NASB, even though uh, somebody said something lately about the NASB. I know they all have had things taken out of them. Um, okay, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Okay, for you have made the Lord my refuge even the Most High, your dwelling place, haven't you? I've added that. Have you made him your dwelling place? Verse 10, No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. And I think, uh, let's see, it's the King James on verse 10 that says, Yet neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, which means near. Okay, so dwelling, house, whatever word you want to put there, no plague is coming in there. If you're reading this over your family, it goes on to say, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, or you, to keep you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Read Psalm 91. Okay, that is our preventative. The Lord gave that in a message and I believe it we there are scriptures about worrying if you find yourself at all anxious okay let me do this I'm gonna go to Google and I'm gonna type in to show you how simple this is scriptures on worrying Okay, now, sometimes you'll, uh, you'll find they're in a website, like, uh, got questions. 
some of their answers are really good. Some of them, remember, they're all man, the man-made words part of it is some man-made <laughs> word. So stick to the scriptures only, not their, their um, commentary, you could say. All right, so here's one, 30 Bible verses to help beat worry and anxiety. Okay, so you click on that. This is in BibleStudyTools.com. Okay. Oh my goodness. The ads are popping all over. Okay, so. Oh. There's actually a video. Hey, maybe it's a YouTube video. Bible versus friend Bible. It's a two hour and 43 minute YouTube video. Okay, but it also goes on. First John 4.18 There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Okay, and then it goes on. 1 Peter 3.14, 2 Timothy 1.7, and on and on. So they're on here. You don't have to watch a two-hour, 45-minute video. But there's... I don't like... The sexy clothing stuff. I mean, this is a Christian website. So, uh, and I bet if you did ad block, they would say, we make our money from, ad, from our ads, so turn off your ad blocker. Anyway. That is how you can find verses on anything you want to learn about, okay? So, we've gone over this, some scriptures you can claim. We are not to worry. How to do a Bible study on worrying if you need it. And anxiety. This is worry and anxiety. Bible study tools. I'll put that in the description box. Um, let's see, Lord Jesus, was there anything else? Seems like there was. Okay, yes. Just because we can have an attitude that I'm not going to catch this thing. No plague is coming into my tent, my house, my dwelling doesn't mean we can just throw caution to the wind and not pay any attention because there's others to think about that are not where we're at. So, let us do our part to not spread germs where we could, in my case, I could say walk down on the first or go down in my wheelchair. I don't walk down there. Uh, I can walk around here most of the time without my cane and stuff, but this is a little tiny apartment and I tend to hold on to the furniture if, if I need to. I, I'm afraid to walk any further than maybe next door or something because my legs just give out and I never know when. So anyway. I could go downstairs on the first floor to check my mail and I might touch the countertop where somebody sneezed. So if I didn't do my due diligence of washing my hands frequently, I'm trying to get in the habit of washing my hands or at least using hand sanitizer when I come in from outside of this apartment. You would do the same thing if you do go out, if you are still working, or you have to go to the doctor's office for whatever other reason, 
or you have you take a bowl of soup to your neighbor maybe they have something else it, not this <laughs> maybe they're just laid up with a broken leg you're taking them some dinner or whatever you come home wash your hands thoroughly I mean you have to act like you don't know who's exposed what to that person we have to have a mindset of I'm not going to catch it but I don't want to pass it on to someone else who's not where I'm at and that could be a family member um, but I think that if if you're claiming that no plague will come into my home that covers your family members it may not cover a visitor however and if you don't plan to put yellow tape on your front door and keep out all visitors again due diligence washing your hands cleaning up after them Clorox wipes, uh, whatever you plan to use. <clears throat> I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide. I read where that will kill germs just as well. I can't tolerate much bleach. You just squirt it on the 3% from the drugstore or Walmart, wherever you get it. Leave it on 20 seconds and wipe it up. And it will kill kill it just fine so keep your hand washing uh, you're supposed to not touch your face but I guess if you just washed your hands and you could if you needed to and oh my eyes are wanting to close for some reason or oh, excuse me while I rub them a minute oh guess fatigue is setting in or you know sleepiness just normal sleepiness I wanted to do a video on this to to let people know I, I mean I just I want you to know I've been I've been in the word asking the Lord where are we where exactly are we in prophecy of you know eschatology the study of the end times I thought Jesus I thought we were gonna be out of here by now before all this kind of stuff happened and <coughs> oops bad bad you see what I just did we're supposed to do this <coughs> not use your hands oh, I should go wash my hands it's just me here and I will before I leave out of here just anyway we're supposed to cough into our elbow it's hard to break habits <laughs> I've always coughed like that. Anyway, um, do what you can to prevent the spread because we can be vectors. But I firmly believe we have nothing to worry about if we stay in a state of calm, trusting our Father that his word is true and you know it, it was occurring to me while I was studying I was in Revelation uh, chapter 4 then 5 well I actually actually had started with 6 going through the seals thinking okay the plague is down here and Three, third seal. Economy fails. Then it's the martyrs under the altar. And then it's the earthquakes. But before that, it's supposed to be war. Well, where was the war? 
are these things out of order? Because I know the Lord gave me a message, I don't know how long ago, saying that the book of Revelation is not written in chronological order. Well, I knew that, but I always thought at least the, the seals, the things in one chapter would be in order. Maybe not. Maybe they're not in order. So I've been praying, you know, Lord, will you show me where we're at in Scripture? You know, nowhere in the Bible does it mention a pre-tribulation rapture. Even though it seems clear that we're in tribulation. Are we in the seven years of tribulation? Does the seven years begin when the Antichrist comes on the scene? Or could we be in the first three and a half years? You know, I have studied Daniel and these verses in Revelation, and I, I can't, I know some people think they have it all figured out. I thought I had it all figured out. That the bride of Christ would be out of here. We'd be gone. The seals would be broken. The Antichrist would appear. Uh... Then there'd be some kind of war. It actually doesn't use the word war. If you look it up, in fact, I will pull it up. It's Revelation 6. Let me just go there. And NASB. All right. The second seal, it says... In the NASB, it says, Second Seal, War. All right? But the way it's worded, When he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come. And another, a red horse, went out, and to him who sat on it, it was granted to take peace from the earth and that men would slay one another and a great sword was given to him I guess it's referring to the man who sat on the red horse a sword was given to him and it was granted to him to take peace from the earth so who is that? I mean, I've always assumed that was war. That men would slay one another. But what do they do in the riots? People start rioting because... They riot for all kinds of reasons. Anyway... It, it, I was just thinking, what if it's not war? Why would there be war when there was just a rapture? Babies disappeared. Pets disappeared. People's grandmas and grandpas and sisters and best friends it just got taken. Why would you start fighting with each other? But, if everybody was in a panic because it just happened, maybe people would kill one another. I'm, I'm just thinking things through here that maybe we're, uh, we're not seeing the picture exactly the way it's going to be. We've always assumed. We've been taught. I have always heard it from preachers 
And here it says in NASB, the second seal is war. Well, some man put that there. That wasn't originally in the Bible. It's just something to think about. Where are we in Scripture? Is this plague the one? Look, the third seal is famine. He broke the third seal. I heard the third living creature saying, Come. I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he sat on it, had a pair of scales. Okay, a quarter of wheat for a denarius, three quarts of barley for a denarius. Now, then you got the fourth seal, which is death. Authority was given to the one who sat on the ashen horse. Uh, let's see. I looked and behold an ashen horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death. And Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword and with famine and with pestilence and by wild beasts of the earth. Plague really isn't in here. I mean, it's mentioned in Matthew. I'm going to look in Luke 21. Luke 21. Okay. See to it you're not misled. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he. When you hear of wars and disturbances, do not be terrified, for these things <clears throat> must take place first, but the end does not follow immediately. How long have we had wars and rumors of wars? Long time. Then he continued by saying to them, Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, plagues and famines. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you. And will persecute you, delivering you to the synagogue. I think he's talking to the apostles here, in my honest opinion. Delivering you to the synagogues and prisons, bringing you before kings and governors for my name's sake. It probably happened also in the inquisitions. It will lead to an opportunity for your testimony. So make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves. For I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. But you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. I think that's now. We've been betrayed by them. It says, and they will put some of you to death. Well, that's been going on in China and some areas over there. And it will happen everywhere. Once the mark of the beast is enforced. And I, I have to say, I believe that's after both raptures. Could I be wrong? Yes. But the Lord, where does this say? Oh, Revelation 3, 10 and 11. That we will be spared, the church of Philadelphia will be spared the hour of temptation. 
I kind of believe that is when they you will be forced to pick. You have to have this mark of the you whatever they call it. Maybe they'll call it some kind of electronic identification mark. It's going to be the chip in your hand or in your forehead. So you can buy or sell. So you can work and get a paycheck. It will be put, or it's your right hand, it will be put right into your account. Cashless society. This plague could be a setup for that. You see that? China is quarantining all their money. They may do that here. Why China and the USA? Is it like, are we the two biggest exporters, importers, they're the manufacturers, we buy from them. We buy from a lot of people. Which is why when we go down, the ships will be sitting in the oceans going, Oh no, who's going to buy from us? So anyway, it says here, and you will be hated by all because of my name. Not if you're not different. Yet not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. I just feel like we've we're gone by then. But it's not until down down in um the return of Christ. This is Luke twenty one twenty five. There will be signs in sun and moon and stars. And on the earth, dismay among nations in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them in a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they put forth leaves, you see it and know for yourself that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, recognize that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all things take place. This generation now, or race, this race will not pass away until all these things take place. Does he mean the race of Jews or this race that we're running? Let's look it up. I never picked up on that before. Jania feminine noun generation time this age 
this nation fathered birth nativity that's one okay number two is that which has been begotten men of the same stock a family the several ranks of a natural descent the successive members of a genealogy sounds to me like this race will not pass away till all these things be fulfilled or it could be age this age what age the church age will not pass away till all these things be fulfilled or this time this time he's talking about that's another option or this nation this nation shall not pass away hmm you see sometimes I don't think the right word got chosen so you could look up the options and go take it to the Lord always and we can't just plug in a word we like better because we don't like what it's saying this generation will not pass away until all these things take place this generation we've always been taught it was generation right what generation the fig tree generation from the time that Israel became a nation again or was it from the time they blossomed from the time they put forth leaves and grew that was in 68 I don't want to think it but it could be it says heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away be on guard so that your hearts will not be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life and that day will not come on you suddenly like a trap for it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of all the earth but keep on the alert at all times praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man now that's Luke 21 36 in the NASB version keep on the alert at all times praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. I just keep thinking of that as the bride stands before her groom. Isaiah 54 tells us Jesus is our husband. He is our husband already not everybody's those who love him more than anything more than everyone oh I was going to check Revelation 3 now some of you know this I know it 10 and 11 okay most of you know it I just wanted to go over it to give you some more hope because you have kept the word of my perseverance I also will keep you from the hour of testing that hour which is about to come upon the whole world 
to test those who dwell on the earth. What kind of test? Will you bow down to the beast system and take the mark so you can work and cash your paycheck, buy and sell? Or will you refuse it? He says, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one will take your crown. Okay, so we want to be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come upon the earth. So what does that tell you about this plague? It's one of the many things going on right now. It's to test his children. Will we have faith when he returns? Hopefully it's going to open some eyes and cause people to pray and repent. The Lord allows it. He's allowing it for a reason. And I hope that it causes people to realize what hour we're in and will cause them to repent. Let us stay in prayer for our lost loved ones, for our lukewarm family who doesn't believe we're in the end, and they still may not. It's like... What is it? They're wearing rose-colored glasses. I don't know what's the saying. They're blind. I don't know. I'm going to end it there. I've rambled on long enough. I just had to get on here and talk with you. We have to hang on to the words of God. The promises of our Lord that those who deserve it will escape all these things that are to come upon the earth and to stand before the Son of Man and Revelation 3.10 will escape the hour of temptation that is coming to tempt the whole earth. I do not believe that we're just going to be protected in our home. Everybody will be forced with that decision. I'm sure of it. Like, to live here, I have to be able to write a check every month. I have to be able to get my social security disability every month. I won't get that if I don't take the mark of the beast. You see, nobody will be protected from it except to be out of here. I mean, can you think of any other way it could possibly mean? Pray that we're, how is it worded? Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing, that hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I hope it's, I hope it's all believers. I do. But I wouldn't count on it. Everyone needs to repent, forgive, show the Lord you love Him, do what it takes, just keep trying and don't give up. With that I say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, myself, my computer, my internet connection and over each and every single one of you and your families, your devices, and your internet connections. 
so we can stay connected until we're out of here. Okay? Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.